Hi, and welcome to Deep Talk. My name is Maria Rivas, and today I am interviewing Luke Burgan. He is uh, an engineer at Cyber Company, and um, he graduated from San Diego State uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering. Welcome to our session, Luke. Thank you very much, Maria, for having me today. All right. Um, so, Luke, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What is your background? So, my background, personally, um, I am a Navy brat, meaning my dad was in the military, and uh, my mom is from Mexico, and my dad is from the United States, so I am mixed, I'm Hispanic, and I've got the best of both cultures. Um, you know, I, I can say I was raised in Southern California, although I did live a couple other places like Texas and Iowa, but I call San Diego my home, and I've been here ever since high school, so... I consider myself to be a native of San Diego. Excellent. And um, can you tell us a little bit about your pathway to college and then your pathway to your current position? Um, I'd like for our audience um, ranging from high school all the way to currently in college, uh, I'd like for them to hear uh, about um, tidbits about what helped you to decide to go into engineering and then now your position. Yeah, great question, Maria. Uh, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a doctor. And, uh, you know, I was really excited about being a pediatrician and helping children. Um, not that I didn't like it, but when I was in junior physics, junior level physics in high school, um, I just fell in love with, you know, the whole concept of trying to figure out how things work in the world. Um, the basic forces, basic principles, mass and force, acceleration, and just trying to explain, like, what makes a car work, what makes a, you know, space shuttle work, what makes a plane fly, um, why when you throw a feather and a bowling ball off a building, um, if they're in a vacuum, they hit the ground at the same time. I mean, that just, like, blew my mind, and I wanted to know more about you know, what that meant and how to explain it. So I was interested at that point going forward in engineering. And I started out aerospace engineering, but I quickly fell in love with mechanical engineering because I felt like mechanical engineering really gave me a lot more options. Um, if I wanted to work in the automotive industry, mechanical engineering. If I wanted to work for a military defense company, mechanical engineering if I wanted to work for robotics or even biomechanical, which would combine both of my passions, um, again, getting an undergrad in mechanical engineering was the way to go. Um, so, you know, I have this passion for engineering. I've had this passion and desire to want to know how things work. And then I wanted to stay local in San Diego because I had really fallen in love with the city, the people, the atmosphere, so going to San Diego State was like the the right decision for me to continue, you know, going in my career. So I went to San Diego State and I got my mechanical engineering degree and I'm very happy and I'm still working in San Diego. So it's a win-win situation. Excellent. Congratulations. Now, Luke, you. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about what did you do in high school to prepare you? Um, for college, um, what sort of um, tidbits would you recommend? And maybe even for our viewers who are watching this in San Diego, um, what types of programs or extracurriculars um, would you recommend for them to do? When I was in high school, obviously, you know, getting involved with like physics, uh, math, and science is, is definitely huge. Um, I did take the AP courses in high school to basically uh, challenge me. Um, I knew that the, the regular classes were very interesting and, you know, the honors classes, but I wanted that challenge that AP courses present. And I would really recommend people to take AP courses, do your best. If you don't pass the AP exam, it's not the end of the world. I think I gained more from the class itself than taking the exam. Uh, the class was really instrumental in, like, giving me a college preview. So I would definitely recommend, you know, taking an AP course in math and science. 
you know, getting involved is huge in high school because, you know, it kind of previews what college is all about. It's about getting involved. And the difference is in, in college, you almost have to get involved. In high school, you don't really have to be as involved in extracurriculars, but it's a good opportunity to learn how it works. Because in college, you know, you take your courses, but if you ever want to do any research or you want to do any club activity, that's going to take initiative on your part. And that's what I would really recommend is get involved in either lunchtime clubs or after school programs and also have a good balance. Like you don't want to be all day working on math and science. You know, you want to have a good balance. And I was involved with sports. I actually was a tri-sport athlete. So, you know, I played football in the fall, uh, wrestling in the winter and baseball in the spring. And that it allowed me to like clear my head. So, you know, some of the concepts are very difficult in math and science, but then I'd go to practice and it would take my mind off, you know, some of the challenging things. And basically it gave me a fresh mind to go back and study that night or get ready for the test the next day. So I had that good balance in my life back in high school, which I recommend every high school student to take. All right. Now, can you share a little bit about um, what did you do during help you land your job with cyber? So when I was in college, I got involved with a group and that's what I was recommending everybody to get involved. I got involved with the, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And uh, you don't have to be an engineer and you don't have to be Hispanic to join. But these are this is an example of a group that is there to help um, promote your professional development and get you ready for a career. And I thought it was great because basically I was able to meet industry representatives. I was able to, you know, hear about internships. And these are some of the things that are like very, very helpful to getting into your career. Um, when you're in college, you pretty much don't have any clue where to start. So, you know, getting involved and like linking up with seniors that have already gone through a lot of the coursework. Um, they guide you, but, you know, then you work with industry representatives who kind of train you what to expect in industry. So because of involvement in the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, I was able to learn very quickly what it was going to take for me to get involved and, and really expedite that learning curve for industry. Um, soft skills, um, which courses to take. You know, all those things that are explained and in getting involved. And for the viewers that, you know, are not too comfortable with, like, SHIP is what we call it, SHPE, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. If you're not comfortable with SHIP, there's SWE, the Society of Women Engineers. There is NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers. And, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So, you know, go find the group that you feel comfortable with. Um, all the groups are super cool. We work together. So it's not like it's a competition. We're all trying to help each other out. So I have a lot of friends that are in the National Society of Black Engineers. I have a lot of friends that are in Society of Women Engineers. And we're all just trying to help each other get that good career. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Luke. Um, now, is there anything else that you want to add um, to what you believe helped you become a strong applicant for San Diego State? You know, nowadays it's starting to become more and more competitive. And then also, what do you think um, you, or like what, how was your, how did you make your application to be strong for when you applied your, to your position? If you have not already touched upon those or do you want to add anything else to that? So, my advice also for high school kids and, and even uh, community college is, you know, understand how important GPA is. I, I remember that I, I don't know if I really understood the gravity or the nature of how strong um, colleges and, and employers look at GPA. You know, although it's a number and it doesn't necessarily reflect everything who you are, it does, it does make a difference and it is a very important part of your profile. So, you know, kind of looking back at, 
you know, my high school days, um, I had a good EPA. It wasn't as good as I would have liked it to be, um, but I had a good GPA. My recommendation would have been, or my recommendation is to really strengthen and do your best in your classes. Um, you're really investing in your future. And if you work really hard right now, you know, you're going to enjoy several years of, you know, the fruits of your labor, um, whether that be the dream job, you know, good salary, good benefits, whatever. Um, working hard right now is so important. So looking back, you know, get that good GPA because then it gives you more options into the colleges and universities that you can go to. Um, once you get to those colleges, maintain that same importance on the GPA because the, one of the first things a lot of employers look at, especially nowadays, because it's so competitive, companies are basically looking at, they have uh, baselines, they have minimum that you don't have that minimum. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible because I know a lot of cases where people with, you know, low GPAs do find careers, but it's just an extra challenge that you don't need. So why, why put yourself through that? You can, you know, work hard right now and you won't even have to worry about that when it's time to find that career. So, you know, study hard, get a good GPA. It will be the world of difference between working extremely hard and, you know, working hard, but not as hard. <laughs> All right. Now, Luke, um, I know that um, different fields, um, well, different fields will have different courses, and um, the level of difficulty will vary amongst um, those different courses. What would you describe as sort of the cutoff of the GPA, and then to what point would it be a good GPA, and then where do you have your excellent GPA? Because I know in different fields it's a little bit different, and I remember when I was taking my um, chemistry courses with engineers, um, I remember them talking about their GPAs and it was a little bit different. Can you expand upon where would be the, the bare minimum, the good, and then the excellent for engineering? Sure, yeah, great question, Maria. Uh, because I've worked in industry and I've talked to so many industry reps, I think I have a really good idea what the industry is looking for. Um, when you're applying for a lot of companies nowadays for engineering, they really don't look at anything below 3.0. And I know that's really tough for a lot of our viewers to, to hear, um, but I, I will tell you this. Let me give you a little story uh, about what happened to me. Um, there was a point in time I did not have a 3.0, and I took my resume to a career fair, and I went up to recruiters. And by the way, this story is not to scare anybody, but it's just to give you an example of what you could face if you don't have a 3.0. Um, I took my resume to a recruiter and literally we said, hello, we introduced ourselves. And the very first question she asked me was, what is my GPA? And when I told her what my GPA was and it wasn't a 3.0, she smiled and handed the resume back to me and said, thank you, but no thank you. And I was, you know, destroyed. But at the same time, um, I, I knew that I had put myself in that position and I would have to work hard uh, to, to raise that GPA. So that's just because we're in a very competitive industry and the market is very interested in finding the best of the best. So I would say, you know, try to shoot for 3.5. Yes, engineering is very difficult. I know the courses are tough, um, but you're going to have to understand that your passion has to really motivate you to study hard and do the best you can. And it's also responsibility. I, I kind of question or, you know, I look at engineers that are just trying to pass and I'm asking them like, well, what is your passion? What do you want to do? Don't you want to invent the next big thing? Don't you want to, you know, help your company to the best of your ability? And if so, you should really strive for getting a good GPA. So, um, I, you know, I, I would say that if you have above 3.0, that's good. 
if you're really interested in having all the options available to you, uh, 3.5 and above, um, especially for engineers that are interested in masters and PhD programs, um, those are really big factors into your your um, application. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that, Luke. I think that's um, very insightful and also very helpful to, you know, sort of one, perhaps a reality check and two, you know, there's a clear goal for those future engineers out there. Um, now, let's see here. What do you see as your purpose in life? I know that this is a little bit of a big question, but um, in case you already have sort of an answer to that, um, what's your purpose in life? So from a professional standpoint, I think my purpose in life is to use my, my education and my passion, combine them, and to really help uh, society, and, and I know it's kind of a big answer, but I feel like I have that ability. I really want to help society by inventing uh, either a product or introducing a service that will take us to the next step in the future. I don't know if that's going to be like transportation or, you know, some, some sort of defense or some sort of you know, everyday product that we use, but I'm always looking for, you know, inventing or improving on a product or, or service that's going to help society. From a personal standpoint, um, it kind of actually goes hand in hand. I do want to help people. And, you know, I've kind of started coaching some of the younger engineers that they can expedite their effectiveness in industry, meaning um, they don't have to go through all the, the learning experiences that I did, they can benefit from what I've done wrong in my career and they can speed up the process because you know, I, I am a young engineer and I've learned a lot, but I just I get very excited when I hear about younger engineers and they don't have to go through the, the mistakes that I did and they can, who knows what they can do. So uh, that's where my passion is. And that's my goal in life is to help others, uh, whether that be through engineering or, you know, approaching a problem in society with an engineering mindset. So, for example, um, maybe one day the city of San Diego is going to need support in solving a problem. And they're going to look towards, you know, not to the politicians, not to you know, other positions, uh, but they're going to look at some of the engineers and they're going to say, you guys need to help us out and we need to be ready to, to answer that call. Excellent. I really like that. Book. Um, that's very inspiring. Now, um, last but not least, with, with regards to this particular section, where do you see yourself in five um, or ten years? Can you describe some of the actionable steps that you will uh, take to get there? So I've been working in industry now for six years. It seems like it's yesterday I graduated, but time goes by quick. I've been working for six years, and the next step um, is to go back to school and to get in my MBA or my master's in mechanical engineering. And the reason I'm now thinking about that is because my company is looking to me for possible management positions and one of the big things in big companies is you have to have some sort of uh, post undergrad education. So uh, for me, that would mean getting my MD uh, or getting my master's in mechanical engineering. And I, I didn't want to do that right out of school. I was very interested in uh, getting my feet wet, getting involved in industry, learning um, I had heard two sides. I had heard, you know, you got the momentum in school, just go through undergrad and, and your master's and, and then you'll go to industry. And then I also heard people say, well, you can learn a lot in industry and then you can really decide what it is that you want to focus on or where you want to, you know, and, and some of the industry terms are going to be so comfortable to you because you practice them 
that you're going to be really successful in, in the MBA courses and stuff. So naturally, I chose that path. I decided after I graduated San Diego State with my engineering degree, I would work. Um, I said three to five. It's been six, but um, that's okay. I'm still, you know, at the very beginning of my career. I really think that I can get my master's or MBA uh, by the age of 30. And that's really good uh, for a long, successful career. So that's that's where I see myself in five to 10 years, a manager or a director. Um, I think I think VP is a little too aggressive. I think I want to take a little bit baby steps. Uh, but definitely engineering manager is where I see myself in five to 10. Excellent. Well, we definitely wish you all the best of luck with that, Luke, although you really don't need it. Um, but we're very excited to see uh, where you will be in the next five to 10 years. Um, Thank you so, very much. Yeah. yeah, of course. So with that being said, um, to our fellow listeners, um, so that is all for today. Um, we thank our guest, um, Luke, uh, for taking time out of his busy schedule to be here to share with you guys um, about his story. And to our members, don't forget to visit our website at www.deeptalk.org and then also uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also, if you could uh, also share with your family and friends, um, and that, that way they can also learn about this.